Hi everyone, Dr. Daniel Rashardi here with the weekly video. In this video, I'm going to talk about hydrogen breath tests and get into how accurate they actually are for diagnosing SIBO. Actually, are and then you, as a consumer of healthcare, can determine if it is going to be worth your money to go ahead and spend the hundreds of dollars that they can cost in order to have one done. Okay, so first let's look at a little bit of the science behind the test. So bacteria in the small intestines, when they're exposed to sugar, they consume the sugar for energy and give off hydrogen as a byproduct. Again, this isn't every bacteria, but a lot of bacteria in the intestines do this. This hydrogen then crosses through the intestinal wall, gets into the bloodstream where it's taken to the lungs and then can be expelled. The hydrogen gas can be expelled from the lungs into the air. So in order to do one, you would ingest a quantity of sugar, either lactulose or glucose. After that's ingested, the clock starts, so to speak. And every 15 minutes, up to two to four hours or so, depending on which test you're doing, you would blow into a tube called a gas chromatograph. And this tool kind of assesses how much hydrogen is in your breath. Looking at the amount of hydrogen in your breath, it's then estimated how much bacteria is in your small intestines. In a perfect world, each lab test would be 100% accurate. And if you had SIBO or didn't, the graph and the hydrogen would reflect that appropriately. But let's take a look at the actual stats and the results of these lab tests. The most recent meta-analysis I could find was published in 2020 by the Journal of Neuroenterology and Motility. What it looked at was how good these hydrogen breath tests, both the lactulose hydrogen breath tests and glucose hydrogen breath tests were at identifying SIBO when you compared it against what's known as the gold standard of SIBO diagnosis, which is called a jejunal aspirate test. And when I read the results, honestly, I was pretty surprised. So the sensitivity of the test, which tells you how good the test is at identifying a positive outcome, in this case, SIBO, for the lactulose and glucose test, respectively, was only 42 and 55%. This means that there's a lot of patients that will have SIBO, and even though they take one of these tests, they will be told that they do not have SIBO. The other piece of data I looked at was the specificity of these tests. And the specificity tells you how good the tests are at identifying a negative outcome. In this case, somebody that does not have SIBO. And the lactulose and glucose tests here were 71 and 83% at correctly identifying if a patient does not have SIBO. It also appears that if you are going to pick a test, the glucose hydrogen breath test seems to be superior according to the statistics and data than the lactulose hydrogen breath test. What I won't talk about in this video are the variety of different factors that can alter the data for the lab test because it's outside the scope of this video. If you are interested in knowing a little bit more about the lab test and some of the factors that can kind of go into altering the results, so to speak, uh, please leave a question or comment. Thank you again for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please leave a like or subscribe. And if you haven't already, go to my website at drdanielricciardi.com and there you can get my free bloating and gas guide. There is a link in the description of this video as well. Stay tuned next week for another video. Be releasing at Monday, 6 p.m. Central Time. Thank you very much. Have a good day.